So many people are saying that metformin is bad for you, that it's dangerous, that it causes kidney problems or cancer, all sorts of things. Guys, um, we're going to break down today what is true and what is not. The first thing I need you to do, though, is please, please, please understand that there is no medication that is all good or all bad. When it comes to medications, just like it does with so many other things in life, we have to weigh risks versus benefits, okay? And honestly, metformin is one of the oldest medications we have in terms of treating type 2 diabetes. Diabetes. By the way, metformin treats other things, right? Polycystic ovarian syndrome and, and other conditions as well. But in terms of treating diabetes, it's one of those medicines that, that's kind of tried and true. Many people have taken it over the years, which is a good thing because it means we have a lot of data on it, right? We have a lot of experience with it. And let me tell you something else. So before we go into the specific myths, um, uh, 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 metformin has its origins in uh, herbal medicines that go back hundreds of years, which I didn't realize. It's something that we've sort of been aware of, have sort of tweaked with, worked with, et cetera, over the years. So I want you to know that. All right, but let's get down to the brass tacks, okay? This is what people are saying. Let's first start with um, uh, kidney damage. People say, doesn't metformin damage your kidneys? Doesn't it cause kidney problems? Doesn't it cause something called lactic acidosis? Okay. Now I'm lumping those together because oftentimes in the real world, in a patient, they are they may be lumped together. But let me explain. Lactic acidosis, by the way, is the buildup of lactic acid in the body. It can be very, very, very dangerous. And yes, um, metformin does have a warning on it. Um, you know, warning doctors and patients of a potential for lactic acidosis in some patients. But let me go back a step. Okay. The thing about metformin is that as doctors, we, we're not thinking of metformin as causing the kidney damage, which then causes the lactic acidosis. That's not how we're thinking about it. What we think about it and how we think about it is if someone has kidney damage, them then taking metformin could potentially increase their risk for lactic acidosis. Are you following me here? So when people say things like, oh, it causes kidney damage, well, that's not exactly how we think about it, okay? Um, what we know is that you, you've got to be cautious uh, or, and if, if not cautious, you got to not use metformin in people with kidney damage. Not that we are so overtly concerned that metformin itself damages the kidney, but we have to be cautious when someone has kidney damage because if they take metformin with kidney damage, it can lead to problems such as lactic acidosis, which is this buildup of lactic acid and other conditions, which can be very dangerous. Um, the other thing I want to keep in mind is that lactic acid can, uh, uh, lactic acidosis potentially could happen in other people, not just people with underlying kidney disease who take metformin, but also potentially people who have underlying liver disease and take metformin. Lactic acidosis could happen as well. The nuance, see, I always say this. I always say, I say this to my medical students, my residents, the devil is in the details, which is why when you're reading stuff and you and your friends are sitting around talking and somebody says, yeah, I heard metformin is bad for you. I mean, that statement is way too broad to even give credence to. Are there potential risks that we have to be careful of? Are there people who cannot, should not take it? Are there things we have to be cautious about? Sure. But that's every medicine we have on the market, right? So listening to someone saying, it's bad for you. No, 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 no. You're going to have to say nobody. You're going to have to give me a little bit more information than that because it is not that simple. Let's go on to some other things that people say. Uh, people do say that metformin um, causes B12 deficiency. Now, this is not entirely wrong. B uh, uh, metformin can actually interfere with vitamin B12 absorption. That's the fact. It's not the end of the world. Okay. Once again, it's all about risk versus benefits. Now, there may be some people that we say, oh, don't want to take this chance with metformin with this patient. That's what we call risk versus benefits. Okay. Uh, somebody with, um, you know, certain medical conditions, I may be saying, I'm not going to give you metformin because I'm concerned that the risks of you taking metformin are bigger than the benefits I think you might get from it. That's called, you know, dis, you know, sort of evidence-based medicine, decision-making, shared decision-making, a whole bunch of things. That's how we make decisions about medications. Everyone doesn't just get everything, okay? But just because there are potential side effects or things that can happen with certain populations, et cetera, doesn't mean the medicine is bad. It just means you need your doctor to help you figure out what you should be on, which is what we hope to help you with anyway. But yeah, metformin, we know that it can potentially decrease the absorption of vitamin B12. In some patients, then we may not choose to use, um, 
metformin. Other patients, we may have to use a supplement or do something else, okay? Once again, not necessarily the end of the world. Remember, vitamin B12 deficiency could lead to anemia and other things as well. So once again, this is something your doctor is going to have to say, huh, is this worth it for this patient, okay? Um, but is this, a, is this a reason to call metformin bad? No, because in my opinion, take a look at Motrin. Motrin, in my opinion, has potentially as many caveats and potential side effects as metformin. And Motrin, you can buy over the counter. Uh, there are plenty of other things like that too, in my opinion. All right, moving on. Um, some people say metformin causes cancer. So I was kind of looking online to see where this might have come from. And I do see that um, at one point the uh, FDA did uh, uh, issue a recall for certain um, extended release formulations of metformin that had um, uh, NDMA, an ingredient um, that had higher than recommended amounts of this NDMA. NDMA has been potentially linked to cancer, and thus the FDA recalled certain batches of metformin extended release that were made by certain manufacturers. Again, that's a specific situation. We have recalls. I hate to say it. Now, I, this is not a good thing. I'm not acting like I'm indifferent to it. I wish we didn't have recalls, but we do have recalls periodically. We do find that there are certain batches or manufacturers that their brand or their product, their version of metform, whatever, is not ideal. And so the FDA will recall it. We've been through this before. Um, but, but this doesn't mean that all metformin causes cancer. No. What it means is that a particular batch made by particular manufacturers, a particular type, the extended release, had increased levels of NDMA in it, which has been linked to cancer potentially. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, the other thing I'll go through just very briefly is, um, People have said that metformin causes dementia. Actually, there are a lot of studies that say that uh, that have shown that metformin uh, may help protect against uh, cognitive decline and dementia. Now, there are some studies that have suggested that metformin may uh, may play a role in dementia, but there are plenty of studies that have said the opposite. You see how it's not cut and dry. This is the bottom line that I need you to take home. The bottom line is when people are telling you, oh, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, I need you to know better than that and know that things are actually more complicated than they seem. And it's not to say, oh, they're wrong or they're right. It's to say, let me, you know, let me talk to my doctor about this. Let me, let me get the scoop. Let me find out what the real deal is. Because the thing is, guys, I'm having a lot of patients come in to me saying off the bat, they don't want metformin because they heard it's bad. And the truth is, in my opinion, um, it's not entirely the most sort of um, informed decision because there are so many caveats. There are even more potential myths and, and truths than what I've discussed here. This is my opinion based on some of the evidence that we have, what I'm seeing in the office, etc. But what I need you guys to do is to kind of put blinders on when you are hearing people talk and you can, you can drop it in your book bag of things. Okay, file it away, but then go ask your doctor and say, hey, what's the deal here? OK, um, but really don't make a decision about what's right for you until you have that conversation and weigh these risks and benefits. Guys, I'm Dr. Jen Cottle, practicing family physician, on-air health expert and video creator. I do daily videos on Facebook. Please like and follow my page on YouTube. Please subscribe to my channel. Click the little bell for updates. Um, guys, consider um, subscribing or, uh, to my uh, exclusive channels on my subscription, <laughs> exclusive groups on YouTube and Facebook. We do private lives. There's other exclusive content. Also, I'm on TikTok and Instagram at Dr. Jen Cottle and go to my website drjencoddle.com uh, to sign up for my free health newsletter. Guys, share this video on to someone who may need to hear it. Write in the comments. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much. Love y'all.